Let's uh, check on where the market is set to open. Just take a look at the SPY futures. They're currently up around a quarter of a percent. Right, for all of the day's market movements, James Gerrish from Shorten Partners and author of Market Matters joins us now live in Sydney. Thanks so much for joining us this morning, James. Look, it was a pretty mixed session overnight, wasn't it? Tech sector up. How does that follow through into our market and what we should see today? Yeah, good morning to you guys. It's going to be a positive open um, collectively here in Australia, but you may mention of sort of the discrepancy or the divergence across the sectors over in the US. So um, the Dow actually finished down and that was weighed, uh, weighed by the banking sector. So, um, you know, lower bond yields are, a, a, are a, a negative for the banking space. So that sort of played out in the US market last night. But you made mention of tech, obviously lower bond yields are positive for uh, US tech. And we saw some pretty strong gains um, in the technology uh, space or some technology stocks over in the US market. But you know, I've got to say that we are starting to, you know, the market, the ASX is approaching uh, that all time high. US markets have, um, have hit all time highs. The NASDAQ is back, back up, sort of knocking on the door of 14,000. So uh, in my view, it's time for a little bit of caution and increasing cash levels around this current point in time. All right, so are you what, with a view to what's next, do you think now? So you're expecting a bit of a pullback? Yeah, exactly. I think there's, there's indicators that are, that are starting to show that the market's losing momentum. So if you look at the internals over in the US market, so the, the, the breadth of the, the recent rally is sort of declining. So what you want to see is sort of all stocks rising. We're starting to see a large number of you know, the, the, the heavyweights leading this um, sort of the, the, the push higher. So the internals are, are starting to look a little bit weaker. Um, last month saw, or the last um, month or so has seen um, the mid caps over in the US start to lag the large caps. So um, that to me, and we're seeing the same thing play out in Australia. So that to me is sort of this, um, you know, starting of um, some risk aversion. So you know, you've got to look at indicators in this space and, you know, to outperform the market, you've got to um, be ahead of the market. Uh, and in our view, that uh, entails sort of lightening off in some of those risk areas of the market. Uh, an increase in cash in the market strength. So um, don't forget, you know, April's the most bullish month of the year as well. Mm. Um, so in the last 15 years over in the US market, we've only seen one decline in April out of 15. So, um, you know, the, the, we, we are in the most bullish period of the year. Um, the market's clearly, and market participants are clearly bullish. So I'm in the view of fading that going into sort of seasonally weak May and June. But of course, uh, US earnings season now on the cards. So we do have that micro fo focus colliding with that macro focus. Obviously, all eyes on the data still as we plough through this recovery. So how does that play out if you are thinking that it, it could see some risk on risk off trade? Well, it just comes down to market positioning. Um, so, you know, it, it doesn't matter if earnings, are, you know, are really strong. If the market positioning is expecting, you know, a bigger bounce in earnings, then that creates a risk um, from a market's point of view. So um, I don't get too caught up in terms of, um, you know, obviously the numbers are going to be strong. We've seen some really, you know, they're comping on a pretty um, weak period as well. So uh, obviously the growth, um, you know, uh, on, uh, on PCP is going to be really strong. So the headlines for this reporting is going to be, um, you know, really, really bullish headlines. I think now the market's already positioned for that. So, you know, the, the, a lot of the sentiment gauges that I keep an eye on are at, you know, extreme bullishness. Um, so, you know, markets um, sort of top out short term um, when bullishness is really high. So I'm not sitting here, you know, suggesting that, you know, we're in for a significant route in equities and the bull market is over. I think the bull market, given the backdrop of low rates, supportive central banks, um, you know, fiscal stimulus, etc., is here to stay. Um, but, you know, markets um, do correct. 10% corrections are very normal across markets. So uh, from my point of view, I don't think the earnings season is probably the main, um, you know, driver in the near term. James, you started uh, out by talking um, tech there. Obviously, locally, when we think of tech, um, we include buy now, pay later. Uh, you saw those results from Zip yesterday. Is that changing your perspective of the buy now, pay later players at this, given its success to date um, in the States? Yeah, no, not really. I mean, I'm long the buy now, pay later um, sector through Zip. Um, and through a smaller company called OpenPay. So 
we've obviously ridden the highs above $14 in zip and we've ridden the, the recent lows um, down to sort of that $8 region. Obviously, it was pretty pleasing yesterday to see zip up 17% on the back of a really strong quarterly. So, you know, the, the thing that you've got to really be conscious of in that space is that, you know, it's not just buy now, pay later. Zip is really um, sort of positioning itself as a, as a digital wallet for millennials going forward. So um, that's going to incorporate other things other than buy now, pay later. So they've got a huge customer base and they're going to leverage that customer base in all things digital payments. So um, that might involve crypto, that might involve um, you know, enabling people to transact or millennials to transact uh, shares on the, through the Zip platform, etc. So when you've got a captive customer base who likes your product and um, you know, um, you know, supports, um, you know, continues to come back, that's going to be a positive. You may mention the US experience. So you know, the, the growth over there is accelerating. Um, and that's now you know, above 50% of their business. So the real growth is in the US, penetration starting to increase, and the market's huge over there. So that's gonna be Zip's driver through their quad pay division um, for future growth, but it's not just about buy now, pay later. I'd, I'd, I'd stress that as well. James, what are your thoughts when it comes to the financials here at home? Fitch have revised some of their ratings when it comes to the big four banks, but where do you stand when it comes to your view? Yeah, I've been really positive on the banks um, coming out of COVID. Obviously, they had um, they put away really large provisioning. They over provisioned for the economic outcomes that we saw. So, um, you know, I think that's obviously supported the the huge rally in share prices. I think about going forward and what is going to be the drivers for banks or the catalyst for banks in the near term. I think we're probably going to see a consolidation or move lower in in bond yields. I think that's going to present a near term. Um, headwind for the banking space. I think we've started to see it in the US market where banks have started to underperform after a period of outperformance. So um, I'm in the camp of trimming bank holdings as opposed to adding to them now. Um, and I'll be a buyer back again into, into weakness. So if the banks correct five or 10%, I'm a buyer again, but right now I'm on the sell side of the banking space. And of course, those big four fronting the Senate tomorrow, can we expect any takeouts from that? Probably not. It's probably old news, um, to be honest with you. I know that's a bit of a blase attitude about it, but um, you know, from a market's point of view, I don't think it's going to be um, um, you know, what drives the, the share prices in the near term. I think you know, the backdrop, bank, banks are incredibly leveraged to the broader economic trends that are playing out. So I'm not turning bearish to banks. I'm simply trimming holdings that you know, after a really strong run, I think banks probably go higher by year end and into 2022. Uh, but in the near term, I think they're overbought. So I don't think that Senate inquiries, um, you know, in a nutshell, is going to be a big factor in share prices. James, thanks so much for joining us this morning from Shore and Partners. Have a good one.